After watching lots of races over the last 30 years, I'm always amazed at the starting line when I see the athletes like this with their hands in their pockets or their arms crossed and all of a sudden the gun goes off and bam, they're ready to go. It's crazy. You would never do a hard training session like that. You would allow yourself time to warm up. And there's several things that you can do before the gun actually goes off. Ideally, if you have a chance, pick one of the three activities and take a 10 to 20 minute progressive warm up. If you can just do the swim, plan it so you can finish your warm up right before the gun goes off. I brought Dan, one of my teammates over here to demonstrate some quick stretches that you can do to kind of get your blood circulating. So if you're limited in time, you can't get out on your bike, you have no access to the lake or the ocean, then you can do some warm exercises on land. First off, we're going to start with some dynamic leg swings. And these are leg swings that you should introduce very easy in the morning because typically your hamstrings are kind of tight. So you start off with a small range of motion and then gradually bring up the range. So we're going to have Dan shift his weight to one leg and just start a gentle swing back and forth. And obviously you would do these for 15 seconds to start with and then bring up the range of motion for another 15 seconds and continue somewhere between about a minute to a minute and a half. And it also helps your stability with your support legs. So the muscles in your foot, your calf, and your lower leg are also firing when you're doing this. You can do a side to side swing also. So same motion, we're going to keep that support leg bent and just swing side to side. Now this is a little more awkward because our range of motion is somewhat limited. And that looks good, Dan. And then moving up the, to the upper body, we want to start doing some dynamic swings with the arms. We can start with a single arm swing, and this just loosens up that shoulder girdle and enhances that blood flow to your arms and your shoulders and, and your back. And then you can go in the opposite direction, and you can start reaching up a little bit higher as your range of motion increases. And obviously you want to do these with both arms, and then you can bring in both arms together. So we can do a double arm back swing, and we're reaching up real high, and you feel this stretch through your stomach, and then a forward arm swing, same thing. And again, the time on this depends on when you feel as though you're freeing up in your shoulder girdle, and it may take 30 seconds to a minute to a minute and a half before you do these. Another stretch that you should consider is a standing glute stretch. This stretch is done on one leg, shifting your weight to one side. Your leg crosses over and you place it on the knee and gently squat down, keeping your head and your shoulders nice and erect. Dan can load his leg just a little bit here by putting his hands on his knee and then pressing down lightly, again keeping the shoulders and head high. Now you don't want to do this too long because it obviously loads the quadricep as well. So you come up, take a break, and then repeat that over again three or four times. The next stretch is for your hamstrings. We're just going to step forward with your front leg. Dan's got his right leg forward. His left leg steps back about two feet, and he's just going to soar like a bird, keeping his back nice and straight, chin forward, eyes looking ahead about 10 to 15 feet, and he's loading that hamstring and loading that front heel, and that really triggers the pull all the way up through your calf and your hamstring. This next stretch is a standing quad stretch. And most athletes, when they do this stretch, they reach up and grab their toe. And Dan, go ahead and do that for us. And they point their knee straight down. Well, ideally, you want to get your quad in hip extension. So the first movement is not to draw your heel up towards your butt, but to pull your knee back behind the other one. And now we're in hip extension. We want to keep the hips tucked underneath. And then gently push up or pull up on the toe as you're bringing your heel towards your butt. And we get a nice stretch all the way through the whole quad. And this is a beautiful stretch to start off in that transition. The final stretch is a series of shoulder stretches. And I'm going to have Dan just extend his arm straight over his head and reach up as high as he can, trying to draw his biceps in behind his head. He's got a pretty good flexibility in this position. You can actually tip to the right slightly and then tip to the left just to get a little more stretch in your lats. And there's no really right or wrong in doing this. You can bend over, you can swing them around in a circle, as long as it's done just slowly to begin with so you enhance that circulation. And the last stretch is just drawing your shoulder across in front, hooking it with your forearm and pulling that shoulder across. And you feel this nicely all the way through your posterior and medial part of your deltoid. The cardinal rule at a race is to warm up before the gun goes off. Don't just stand there with your hands in your pockets. Make sure that you warm up. So let's back up. What can you do? Race morning. Take a warm shower, not too long. That'll help your circulation. If you have an opportunity to do one of the activities for 10 to 20 minutes, that will also help. Swim, bike, or run, that warm up will carry over for the entire event. If you cannot do any of those, make sure that you do some stretching. Those four stretches that we went over, the glute stretch, the hamstring, the quad stretch, and the shoulder stretch are all great warm-up exercises. Good luck to you.